Hi, I'm Brian Bianco. I'm the owner of Streamline Back Shop. You can find us on the web at www.sbs4dcc.com. I'm uh, speaking today about how to set the top voltage, the output voltage of a DCC decoder to a fixed output level. This is important for people working in smaller scales, as an example, who uh, are using engine little motors that are rated uh, for less than 12 volts. Um, a lot of the uh, Z scale and uh, the NN3 crowd um, are importing motors that operate in this particular example 6 volts. Um, and full output voltage from a, uh, a traditional DCC system uh, would damage that. So we're going to look at the different techniques that you can use to adjust that output voltage. It's important to note that anything that we discuss here is specific to the DCC system that you're working with. The output voltage is um, directly proportional to the input voltage. So if my system puts out 13 volts, I set my output on my decoder for 6 volts, um, that works on my system. And it's also very specific to that particular decoder because of um, a phenomenon called voltage drop, which basically means that you don't necessarily get the exact same output out of any two devices, even if they're exactly the same device. Um, how much difference there is from device to device uh, could be minimal. It may or may not matter. It depends on the tolerance of what you're trying to, uh, the tolerance of the motor that you're trying to power. The And, and to, to finish that point, if my system puts out 13.5 volts and I set my decoder to 6 volts output at the motor, I take my locomotive to a club layout as an example, and they have a 15 volt input, then I'm going to have a different output at the motor. The only way to know what that is is to go through this process again. So uh, that's a, a very important point to note is that voltage, output voltage at the motor is strictly dependent upon the input voltage uh, from the command station. The tools that we're going to use today uh, are just a basic multimeter. Uh, this one is available at sbs for dccom from train control systems. You can pick them up anywhere. It doesn't require a special um, meter for this particular measurement because we are measuring the rectified DC voltage at the motor. You cannot, you can use this to measure track voltage on a DCC system, but you won't get an accurate reading. Uh, you have to use a device like a railroad amp meter or uh, what they call a true RMS um, voltage meter. Um, the other device that we'll use today is an ESU uh, load tester. This is a super handy device. Um, it's a decoder test stand uh, that has uh, an 8 pin NMRA connection, a 6 pin, um, they call it an NEM 651. It's got a piano box. Uh, which is just a set of screw terminals that you can hook up any uh, hardwired decoder through. It's got a 21 MTC connector, a Plux 22 connector, and a Next 18 connector. So um, it's got all sorts of quick connection points. Uh, it has uh, an onboard motor, uh, an onboard speaker, and also a series of LEDs to test the lighting output functions. So it's a really super handy uh, decoder test station. Um, my choice to, to do any work uh, outside of a locomotive because it basically simulates everything you would have in a locomotive, uh, but it's a guaranteed circuit. So there's no chance of 
um, poor connections, poor anything, bad motors. Uh, I suppose the motor can go bad on this one too, but, but you get my point. Um, so, other ways to reduce voltage um, besides uh, setting CVs, um, one is with a uh, NCE offers a P109 power supply, it's their Z-scale model for the power cab, this is a 9 volt output. Um, the, N the NMRA standard says something like the minimum input voltage to a command station is about 7 volts. Uh, you'd have to read the standard, I don't remember the exact number, but bottom line is you can reduce the voltage uh, at the rail simply by changing the power supply to your command station. Now you want to read the manual and find out what the, the operational specs of your command station are, but if you're a Z-scaler or you're consistent relun consistently running small motors, um, it may make sense to just reduce the voltage um, uh, at the input. Uh, another device that's available is uh, a Digitrax UP6Z. This um, is basically one of their universal throttle panels, but it has a set of connections that uh, this one will actually drop the voltage either 4 volts or 6 volts. Now these are fixed reductions in voltage in both cases. Um, they don't necessarily guarantee or they don't necessarily produce a specific voltage at the motor, but they will drop the entire voltage of the system and, and that may be enough for your particular application. Uh, this can be used uh, as a standalone device, it doesn't require a Digitrack system, it can be used with an MRC, an NCE, you pick it. Um, the, the, the voltage dropper, as they call it, um, is basically a series of diodes. Uh, you can also make one of these yourself. MRC sells a product called an MRC AT880, um, which is the, the exact same thing is what's internal to this uh, and it's just a series of diodes that drop the input voltage uh, to the rail. Um, so in our case though for our example today we want to um, use the CVs in the decoder to uh, affect the um, pardon me to uh, uh, affect the voltage at the motor. Um, this is not uh, terribly straightforward. It, it's not difficult, um, but it's important to know that every decoder has its own nuances in the way it handles motor voltage. Um, ESU, Soundtracks, uh, QSI, um, all have a specific nuance. Um, it's not difficult so long as you worry about the end result uh, which is taking the measurement at the motor. So just as an example, um, let me turn things around here a little bit and um, actually show you some of the the different ways um, for my uh, test station, I have put together uh, a set of uh, just uh, they're just uh, little clamps. Um, uh, I can't even think of what they're called now, but but anyway, they're. Um, little test lead connectors and um, I can use these to clip directly to uh, the posts of a motor output um, and then uh, uh, and then I can plug that into my test stand um, 
I can also just come directly off the rail with a set of uh, test leads. And if you're going to do it this way, you have to be really careful about not crossing or shorting out uh, any of the other wires. Um, the simplest way to destroy a decoder is to short out the motor circuit. So um, keep that in mind as you, uh, if you're not going to use a, a test stand, that's the advantage of having a, a decoder test stand. So I uh, have. Um, I can do it like this and then just simply take my measurement uh, across my leads as I change the voltage at the rail. I'm going to put uh, one of my test leads on the orange wire and one on the gray wire. Orange and gray are always the motor connections on all decoders. Black and red are always the track connections on all decoders. So I, I can do it like that. I, I personally prefer to use uh, my low tester test station. Uh, I just happen to have a, a, a low sound decoder here on the, the bench. It doesn't matter it does not matter whether I use JMRI, uh, the ESU local programmer software, or my command station to make these settings. Uh, the JMRI and the local programmer software make this easier, but all of this can be done with any command station. Uh, it's just a, a couple of simple CV settings. So to start with, uh, we've got our decoder hooked up. Uh, we're going to set this to just basic voltage reading, a DC voltage reading. And we're going to put full power uh, to our motor. And then we're going to read the output voltage, which in this case is 8.9 volts. So there's a simple calculation that we can do, which is um, uh, it, it's easier to read it than it is to, to do this. But basically, you can divide 255 by um, uh, 8.9 by 255 um, and then divide that, divide 6 by the result of that and that will give you a value that you can enter into uh, the CV range. That assumes that the range of the CV is 0 to 255. Uh, you have to change that number if you have a decoder that is different and there are exceptions to that of course. Uh, it's like everything, right? So, um, in this case, I've done that math, and it says that I now need to set the value of CV5, right? CV5 is the top voltage uh, at the motor. Uh, I'm going to set that to 153. Uh, I've input that data, and... Now, when I turn this on, I get about 5.5 volts. And I tried this a couple different ways, and it never works out quite perfectly. So the point is that'll get you really close in a range, and then basically uh, you'll have to start adjusting um, you know, by a value of 5 um, up or down, depending upon which way you need to go, to dial it in to exactly 6 volts output at the motor. 
so I just added 5 to that and I'm now at 5.63 so I could probably go up another 20 20 points we'll go up to 178 A little too much, 6.25. So I'm really close here. I'm at 5.96 volts. So that's the basic process. And then what I would do from here is set CV6 which is the mid voltage uh, I would make that half of whatever I set uh, CV2 uh, I'd make that the midpoint between uh, CV5 and CV2 CV2 is the low voltage basically you're gonna set that at whatever value makes the motor start turning at speed step one the and that's basically the same process you just start increasing the voltage until the motor moves the closer to zero you are the better um, so you get the the better end of the range and the slowest performance possible the you can do the same thing using a speed table it's important to note though that um, it just is more CVs that you have to set uh, I've done it off of a three-point curve which is CV2 5 and 6 um, a speed table uses CVs uh, 67 through 94 um, and basically you would use the exact same process start at CV 94 set that uh, at a value of uh, at the same values that we used here start out at 153 and then measure the voltage and work your way through it um, and then go back and set CV67 which is the low voltage and then make whatever curve you want out of the rest of it. Uh, it it is again important to note that every decoder is different in the way they treat uh, CVs 2, 5, and 6 and the speed table uh, and you do have to turn the speed table on in CV29 so don't forget to do that. The the last comment to make about this is just be aware that um, the trim CVs uh, 66 and 95 will also affect, um, they will have an impact on what that top voltage is. So as you make adjustments to those, you may want to go back and validate. Uh, what your final voltage is at the motor and then uh, one final point if you happen to use DC mode uh, on your decoders most decoders can be set for DC or DCC as a rule of thumb I always just turn the DC mode off uh, there are a lot of other implications that I don't want to get into here but unless you really truly need it just turn it off and then you never have to worry about it if you are going to use it just know that most brands require that you set a different it has a separate setting for the top end voltage and if you fail to set that and operate your loco in DC mode you'll put full voltage to the motor <laughs> so um, just a, a, a final point to be aware of so with that um, hey thank you for uh, joining us today for this uh, discussion on setting the top voltage and come visit us on the web at www.sbs4dcc.com. Thanks. Have a great day.